if you've been looking at soilless mixes, you probably know there's a lot of ingredients that can be used. So here on Tobacco University, I want to go over some common soilless mix ingredients for indoor cannabis production. All right, we got a lot of ingredients to go over, so let's get started here. So first off, we're gonna start with peat moss. So peat moss, when we're looking at peat moss, it's an organic product. Uh, it is mined uh, from decomposing plants, most often mosses in boggy areas. Commonly sourced from Canada uh, for use in the United States, and this does cause some growers uh, to select not to use this material despite its benefits because they feel that uh, it could be damaging the environment. The characteristics of the peat may vary slightly depending on the species of plant that was grown in the area, but overall it is a very consistent product that you purchase uh, from batch to batch. It can be very consistent, very easy to spread, uh, as again, as it warns here, uh, the pH uh, sometimes can be on the acidic side at 3.4 to 4.8, but you can easily mix in a little lime there uh, and balance that out. Then there's uh, sagar moss here, as we see here. This is, uh, is several species of moss that can inhibit bo uh, bogs as well. Not a commonly used material, but does maintain moisture and aeration. Typically, you'll see it used for a lot of flowers, particularly orchids in some cases. Can be used in seed starting mixes because of its uh, antifungal properties, so it does have some benefits, but typically not used on a large scale. Uh, your bark products. Uh, there's a whole different ranges, different uh, tree barks, but basically they're all wood-based materials that are ground and are partially uh, comp uh, composted. This is a less expensive alternative to peat moss and does provide more aeration, but keep in mind with that aeration, it does dry out quicker for your roots. It can require higher nitrogen fertilizers for the plants because its breakdown may uh, take in or bind up some of that nitrogen, making it less available to your plants. It's a common bedding material for uh, pets and animals, so it can usually be found, and easily found, and found in large quantities. There's also perlite. So perlite is white volcanic rock uh, that was crushed and heated, which results in the material expanding, kind of like it puffs up. Added to many soilless mixes to help improve drainage and e increase aeration. Perlite is non-toxic, sterile, and also odorless. There are also different grades or sizes to fit a variety of needs, so make sure you're purchasing the perlite uh, with the right size. Uh, there are coarser, which are basically bigger particles, and then finer particles um, as well. So just make sure you're purchasing the right size to fit your uh, intended use for those. Then there's also uh, styrofoam beads, which looks on a quick look very similar to perlite, but is uh, a little different. It is an inexpensive substitute to perlite that has many of the same properties, such as improved drainage as well as aeration. However, unlike perlite, styrofoam will compact over time and may float to the surface, reducing its effectiveness. So after many irrigation events, you might find those kind of styrofoam beads start to kind of rise to the top there. So just be aware of that. For vermiculite, another uh, commonly used one, and it is a very light kind of grayish puffy substance here uh, that forms when mica chips are heated. Vermiculite contains some potassium, magnesium, calcium, and even some silicate that will slowly become available. Slowly is the key word there. It's not going to be very quickly available to your plants. It is used, though, to increase moisture and nutrient retention in mixes, and is actually the preferred option when looking at to grow cannabis. It, it, just like the perlite comes in different grades, a fine, a medium, and a large there. The large is going to have a little bit greater on the um, aeration properties uh, compared to the fine. But again, experiment and see what may fit for your particular uh, operation, depending on what else you might be mixing with it. There's also coarse sand that can be used. Large sand particles, hopefully washed in an and or horticultural grade, are added to improve drainage and weight in a potting mix. The, these uh, typically used for succulents, such as cacti, and not very common with cannabis. Often, the drainage rate is too fast, and the sand doesn't, does tend to add a lot of weight to the containers, to the mixes that you might be growing in. In addition, sand can uh, damage recirculating pumps, uh, uh, which can be another reason, and probably another common reason why it's not necessarily used a whole lot, simply because of the damage that can occur to different irrigation equipment. Um, that's why it's not used for cannabis production as well as some other plant production uh, as well. 
uh, to improve water retention. If that's your main goal, there's actually uh, water retention crystals. And there's small translucent granules that are non-toxic, uh, non-biodegradable, and pH neutral. These polymers can absorb 500 times their weight in water and are added to reduce the frequency needed for water. However, keep in mind these crystals do have a lifespan, typically up to uh, five years. So if you're reusing media, the water retention properties may change as the polymers degrade over time. If adding to an existing potting media, you should always moisten before using and add in accordance to the manufacturer's directions. You don't want to over add um, these if you're reusing soil or want to uh, add them to new soilless mix that you might be using. There's also limestone. So with limestone, that we're using this to kind of adjust the pH to an optimum range, and it can be a source of calcium and magnesium, though those calcium and magnesium while present in the stone particles here may not necessarily be plant available. Often needs to counteract or needed to counteract some of the peat moss to create a, a final substrate with a plant favorable pH to make the nutrients available to the plant as well. And then lastly, getting to one of the very common biological additives you might see added to um, a soilless mix is mycorrhizae. It's a biological uh, growth enhancer that increases the yield of flower, fruit, and vegetable plants by extending the root system to acquire the most available nutrients in the soil. Mycorrhizae also can improve resistance to root diseases and stresses. Now, how this actually works is that the um, fungus develops a symbiotic relationship with the plant. In this case, we're showing a tree in the sense that the tree is capturing sunlight with photosynthesis, producing sugars and carbohydrates. The plant is giving those to the fungus. So the fungus has a good food source. In an exchange, because this is a symbiotic relationship, the fungus is able to get water and minerals uh, at a greater rate than the roots because of its very fine high surface area to volume ratio. So it is giving water and minerals to the plant so the plant can grow better, and the plant in exchange will give those carbohydrates back to the fungus. So this is why it's commonly added to soilless mixes as well as field-grown operations as well. However, its effectiveness might be limited in soils that are already very high in nutrients, simply because the plant doesn't necessarily have to work that hard to get the nutrients in the first place. But as one uh, symbiotic relationship that does occur in nature, where mycorrhizae and plants can have a symbiotic relationship.